question for you. How many times have you been on, say, a family vacation, or, or maybe it's a full-blown landscape photography trip, or, or maybe just putzing around on the weekend, you know, whatever the case may be, and you come across a scene that, that really speaks to you. I mean, you love the composition. You've got some nice foreground interest. You some nice grouping of flowers. Maybe there's a path in the midground that leads to these majestic mountains in the background. And you absolutely love this composition. It shows a lot of depth from the foreground, the midground, to the background. It really can draw the viewer's eye all the way through your scene to the big payoff in the background, which is the mountains. You slap your wide angle lens on your camera because you want to capture the whole entire scene. Hit that shutter button, look on the back of your camera, and you nailed it. You bagged the shot. You couldn't be more happy. All was right in the world. You can't wait to get back, load it on your computer, throw an edit on it, and put it on social media. For the world to see. When you get home, you load them on your computer, something looks a little bit odd, something looks off in your photo. And you're not 100% sure exactly what it is, you know, your, your foreground looks solid, midground is spot on, but the background, your mountains have gone from this to, to that. And that pancaking effect is very common with wide angle photography. It's very difficult to, to, to really navigate around because really whatever's going to be in your background is going to become like miniaturized, and especially if it's mountains. That's where you really notice it the most. And there's a couple different ways to, to go about, um, you know, navigating this issue. You can zoom into the mountains and take a photo and kind of zoom back out for the midground and background and uh, midground and foreground and blend them all together. But a lot of times you might not have those three images to work with. And this Photoshop trick I'm going to show you is going to enable you with just one image to make a selection of your mountains and just stretch them back out to make it more closely resemble you know, what you saw with your naked eye when you actually captured the photo. And I got this idea for this video. This is an image that I, I took in, um, in Hawaii uh, earlier this year, and I just posted this on Instagram last week. And when I, here I'll show you the original image here. You know, the mountains, when I'm looking at it, it it's not, that's not what it looked like with my eye when I captured the scene. And it really kind of, you know, took away from this, you know, the overall image here because, you know, I love the the pathway here in the in the foreground. I like the midground area here, the different, you know, shades of green, and there was some light kind of shining across in this pasture area here. And then the big payoff was going to be the mountain range here and these ominous clouds. But when the mountains become hills, the payoff isn't as great anymore. So the scene really just it didn't work for me anymore. So I, I decided to stretch the mountains out and figured this trick might be uh, helpful for some. And the best part is, is it, it doesn't even take 60 seconds. It could not be easier to do this. So first, I'm just going to toggle on the, the final image just so you can kind of see the difference in the mountain range here. And if you just really look right through here, you can see the difference that it makes. And this final image here is much more closely or much closely resembles whatever I'm trying to say here to, from what I actually saw with my naked eye when I captured the image. So to do this, you just make sure that your, your layer is highlighted with the image. We're going to come up here to the crop tool, select it, and we're going to drag our canvas up to the top here because you ultimately you, you, need more can, you need more room to drag the actual image. So wherever you leave this here, this is going to be where you drag the top of your image. So if you only want to drag it up a little bit, leave your crop there. If you need to drag it up more, you leave it right there. I'm going to go somewhere right in the middle there. But you want to be careful here. You don't want to get too carried away. You can, you can only stretch a mountain so far before it starts to look kind of distorted or just, uh, just it doesn't look right. Your ultimate goal should be to make it as closely resemble what real life looked like when you actually took the photo. So once you have your crop done, you just hit the check mark here. We're going to come up here to our uh, marquee tool, make sure rectangular marquee tool is highlighted. And we're going to make a selection right along our horizon line all the way across and all the way to the top here where our actual image ends. And then we're going to right click the selection and go to free transform. And all you have to do now is just start stretching. And we're just going to grab the tool or, or the, the anchor button here and just pull it all the way up to the top. And you can actually see what it's doing to the mountain and the clouds and everything. Drag that up to the top and you hit the check mark and you're good. And that's it. And if you have any little white area here on the side, you can either crop in a little bit or just kind of clone it out, whatever you want to do there. But ultimately, that's exactly how you, um, you know, stretch a mountain range to more accurately, you know, resemble what you saw in real life when you captured the photo. So I thought it really worked well for this scenario right here. I'll turn that off. Whoops. 
There we go. And uh, like I said, it's uh, it's super simple to do, and I figured that um, it's this is a very common issue with wide-angle lenses and mountain ranges, so I figured somebody else might be able to um, possibly save one of their images with this trick as well. So uh, as always, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below, and I guarantee I'll get back in touch with you. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you could hit the uh, the thumbs up sign, it lets me know that this type of these types of uh, tutorials are, are beneficial to you all, and uh, I'll make more of them. So um, anyway, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you all next week. Bye.